Here we are, part nine, two thirds of the way through. So part nine is short on presentation and big on demonstration. Overcutting is a skill that editors not working in a high-end facility are probably not too aware of, which is why learning how to do it quickly will make you very marketable to big agencies. So what is overcutting? Overcutting is simply the process of replacing watermarked or dirty footage with clean or unwatermarked footage. You'll run into dirty footage anytime you're working with dailies from a film set, stock footage demos, viewing pre-release versions of new films, and in pre-visualizations or pre-vis when working in graphics-heavy pipelines. Like most editing things, there's a few different ways to overcut, one of which is by hand, and that's where the name is derived. Overcutting by hand literally means to cut in a new version of a clip over the top of the old version. So overcut it. Automatic ways of overcutting include replacing footage via right-click, replace, or using an offline relink workflow. It's important you remember that no matter how you overcut your footage that you should always double check your work. Never assume everything matches 100%. For example, feature films go through many revisions before a final release. So what you receive in a watermarked version V1 will rarely match up with the final clean version of the film because scenes get cut, replaced, or even moved around. All right, let's look at how this overcutting process works. So what we have here is a very simple edit. Now, I purposely put this together in a very messy fashion because at some point we're going to have to prep this. But before we prep this sequence, we have to overcut all of this dirty footage. And by dirty, I mean it has this watermark, it has time code burned in, and it even has the file name burned into the file. This is obviously something that you wouldn't finish with. So we need to put clean footage on top of it. And we're gonna use this clean interview footage over here. So to do that, let's first start by making a new sequence. So we'll come here, new sequence, we'll call this Emilio interview clean. And in this sequence, we're gonna drag all of our clean interview clips. Now, from earlier in the course, we know that all of these interview clips are the same length. If this were the real world, you would need to go through and check these to make sure that they all line up appropriately. Because of our situation, we don't have to do that. So I'm gonna stack all of these and then move them up one layer. Okay, zoom into the sequence. Now I'm gonna grab our Emilio interview multicam clip. Come in here and let's make sure that there are no in and out points. And then let's lay that into our first video track. Okay, now let's take this sequence, put it under our final Scramble King sequence so that we have both sequences open at the same time. The next thing I'm gonna to do to make it a little bit easier on us is minimize all of my tracks so that we can see everything that's going on. Now, I'm fairly certain that most of our interview clips, if not all of our interview clips, are down here on video track one. So I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger and then zoom into our timeline. At this point, we're gonna go through the manual process of overcutting. Now there's a few different ways to overcut, but I'm gonna start with the manual solution and then show you some other solutions afterwards. So here we go. All right, so we'll scrub along until we find our first interview clip. And it looks like this is the first one that we're going to come to. So I'm going to select the clip. And actually, just so we don't make any mistakes, I'm going to lock all of my audio tracks. OK, so I'm going to match frame by hitting F after selecting that multicam clip, then jump into my Emilio interview and reverse match frame by hitting Control Shift F. Remember, these are all better editor keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to grab our camera one or our A cam, which is going to be video layer two. So I'll hit F after I select my track target. Oh, excuse me, we gotta turn off our audio track targets. I'm gonna track target video track two, hit F. There we go. Mark an endpoint, come back into my main sequence, mark an endpoint and an out point. And then I'm gonna overcut on the layer above my interview track. So on video track two. Now, if we disable this clip, we can see we have a clean clip on top of the dirty clip. This is the manual process that you would use if you were working with reels from feature films, if you were working with visual effects, anything that might have watermarked footage that you need to overcut and replace with clean footage or updated versions of footage. Okay, and let's continue forth. We'll keep doing it. So this looks like our next interview clip right here. So again, I'll come here, 
I'm going to match frame. Actually, you see how this one has an overhang to the left of the clip? I'm gonna go ahead and add an add edit right here. And I'm gonna make a match frame right there, come into my clean sequence, reverse match frame, and this is gonna be our C cam. So I'm gonna come up to my C camera track, hit F, mark an endpoint, jump back into my clean sequence, endpoint, out point, and overwrite. Endpoint, out point, and overwrite. Now, if we zoom in, we can look and see that there's something going on in this clip. So what we have here is it looks like the editor slowed down this last portion of the clip. But what we have to make sure of is that we copy the time remapping properties of this clip as well. So let's grab it. It looks like 70%, so I'll come in here and change the clip speed to 70%. I know that it's gonna be optical flow, and I'm gonna say that. Okay, so if you look, when we disable that clip and zoom in, we notice that this clip has been scaled. So let's go ahead and take that scale. We can control C and paste it. Paste our attributes, motion only. And uh, it's not gonna cooperate with this, that's okay. So we can come in here, grab motion, and it looks, that's odd. Oh, wait. Ah, I know what's going on there. So this clip has actually been scaled inside of the multicam clip itself. So to match that in our Scramble King sequence, we can jump into the scale property and zoom in to crop out those black bars. And then I'm gonna take that motion and paste it onto the next clip. Great. And we keep going. Again, we're gonna match frame, jump into our clean sequence, reverse match frame. This is gonna grab camera two. So I'm gonna select it, hit camera two, mark an endpoint. Let's make sure we're looking at the right thing. Come here, then we're gonna go in, out, and going on to video track three, good to go. We can look at that again, looks good. Looking at this, we see that there's a purple icon here, which means there's an effect applied to this clip. I'm gonna guess that yes, it's a warp stabilizer. So I'm gonna take this and paste it onto this clip. And what's cool is because this is the exact same clip, we don't have to analyze this again. All right, again, just to double check, looks good. Okay, let's zoom out until we find our next interview clip. That looks good. Coming in here. Select, match frame, come back here, reverse match frame. This is camera C, match frame, endpoint, come here, endpoint, out point. And double check. Again, we gotta scale it up. Zoom back out, find our next clip. And Repeat the process. Now on this one, we can tell that things have been moved a little bit. I'm actually gonna undo that. This is pretty close, that looks good. Okay, we're gonna zoom back out and jump to the next clip. Almost done. Looks good. Great. Okay, so that is the manual method for overcutting. Now I wanna talk about some ways to do this automatically, and we can continue looking at our Emilio interview. So if you're looking at this and thinking, man, that looks like a multicam sequence, you would be exactly correct. So what I would recommend is saving a new project, which I'll go ahead and do that. So we'll say save as, and I'm gonna call this overcut auto. If only I could spell, there we go, okay. So this is gonna be a new project where I can go into my 
multicam interview here and say open in timeline. And now what I'm going to do is actually replace these clips in the multicam. So I'll go ahead and just add these three layers up. We're not going to get rid of them. We're just going to disable them. I'll grab my interview clips, control C, copy these and paste them right here. So we have our A, B, and C cam replacing our dirty A, B, and C cam. Now, if we go back into our final Scramble King project and find some of these interview sequences, it's clean. So if we go and find another one, like right here, it's the same shot. Pretty nice. That would have been the faster way to go about things, but you need to know how to do it manually. It's a very important skill to understand. Okay. We're in good shape there, guys. Now I want to talk about another way that we can do this automatically with a different project. Sit tight. All right, hopefully that wasn't too long of a wait. So we're in a new sequence right now. This has nothing to do with our Scramble King project. And all this is is a fun project of a dude walking into a warehouse and banging on some drums. Pretty cool. Um, but what you'll see is that all of the footage is watermarked with this art grid logo. So we want to overcut all of this with clean footage. Now, there's a couple of ways we can go about this. And one of the ways that I want to show you is replace with clip. This is one of my all time favorite commands inside of Adobe Premiere. It's useful in so many ways besides overcutting, but that's what we're going to look at right now. So let's just start with this first clip of the man twirling around his drumsticks. So to find that, I'm going to shift F and let's copy that file name and paste it up here. OK, and so that's going to pull up two clips. And if you'll see what I see, we already have an issue right off the bat. Our frame rates don't match. So our dirty footage is 23976, but our clean footage is 25. And that's because this clip has been interpreted. And I know that all of the dirty footage has been interpreted as well. So what I'm going to do is uncheck this. Let's go to all of our clean footage. See, it's all 25 FPS. And I'm going to right click and say modify interpret footage. And we're going to change this to 23.976. Great. OK, now we can twirl this back down and let's find our clip again. Great, that's still there. OK, so we have our clean clip loaded up in our monitor. Now I want to show you something else. So if we come here and go turn on our overlays, you'll see that our first clip on our video track one, the time code is all zeros, where if we look at our source clip, we have actual time code. All right, that presents a bit of a problem. These things are not going to match up. So what do we do? How do we deal with that? Well. Since this is stock footage, we know that these clips are the same, even if their time code doesn't match up. We bought them from this stock footage provider. So knowing that and seeing that at the beginning of the clip, we have this little white triangle right here. That triangle tells us that is the head of the clip. So I know that I can cut in the beginning of this clip and it should match up to the beginning of our dirty clip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this clip and I'm going to say right click, replace with clip from source monitor. And you'll see that our art grid logo instantly disappeared. If we want to make sure that this clip is the correct clip, another step that we could do, let's undo that, is I could actually alt drag this clip up to create a duplicate. And then I'm going to replace the dirty clip in this clip. So now our watermark is gone. And I can go to effects and drop my opacity down to 50%. And looking at that, I can see that everything does indeed match up. So let's pull that back up to 100. And we'll drop this clip down. OK, so let's back up and go to another clip to show you a different example. OK, this guy walking in will be fine. I mean, it's the same dude. OK, so let's pull him up and you can see that his time code starts at a different time. He's starting at three seconds into the clip. So let's find this clip and we're going to control C, put that up here. OK, so our clean footage is up here. We're going to grab this. And now what I can do as a different trick, if I know that this clip, this dirty clip starts at hour zero, if I know that this dirty clips time code is all zeros, that means that we are three seconds and 19 frames into this clip. So I can come to my clean clip and just say plus three seconds and 19 frames. And that should be the exact frame that we need to start on. So I'll come here and we will right click so I'll come here and say Control R, which is my hotkey for replace with clip. And just to double check that everything matches up, we'll select this again. And this time I'm going to make this blend mode difference. And everything looks pretty clean. Might be a hair off. There we go. That's what we're looking for. 
Okay, make this normal and we're good to go. All right, so that's how you use replace with clip to replace these things. Now let's do one more example. Let's pretend that we don't use our overlays. So I'll come to the beginning of this clip and I'm going to again search for this clip in my project panel. So go here, great, and do that. Okay, so we pull up our clean clip. Now, this is obviously somewhere in the middle of this clip because the head of this clip is starting with the guy before he even gets to the drum set. So I'm gonna move this until we get, okay, so he sits down and now what I'm gonna do is look for distinct features in the frame and match them visually. For example, let's make this a little bit bigger. We can see that the drumstick right here is kind of crossing one of these stands. His hand is still on his leg. He's kind of looking down at this angle. Let's try to find that same moment. Okay, so he grabs the drumstick and his hand is now on his leg. His head's not really looking the same direction. So let's go a little bit further, maybe too far. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna mark an endpoint and then I'm gonna come in here and drop this on top on my video track two on top of this clip. Drop it in, and let's change our blend mode to difference again. And okay, so we are off by a little bit. Now, one of the things I wanna check, make sure that our scaling is right. Okay, all the scaling's the same. So let's slide this until we get it in the right spot. There we go, feeling good. There we are, that's what we were looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, move this over here. This is all black except for the watermark, which is good. Say normal, and we have a clean clip. Let's go ahead and fix this. And that's how you do it visually. Okay, so we can drop those in place. Now let's say we don't want to do this by hand for this entire sequence. I mean, for a 30 second segment, this is a bunch of clips. So what we can do is actually, let's undo all of this. Whoop. So all of that work that we just did has been undone. So everything is still watermarked and we need to figure out a better way of doing this. So when we have all of these clips that are watermarked, they're from the same source and I know that all of their file names are the same, there's an easy way to go about replacing all of these at once. To do that, I'm gonna save as, I'm gonna save my entire project as a new name. So overcut, we'll call this auto for fun. Okay, and now I'm gonna come to my dirty footage select everything, right click and say make offline. Make sure when you do this, you say media files remain on disk. That's important, we don't wanna delete them. Okay, now we have this awful red image and we have to fix it somehow. So I wanna jump into my Explorer window. So in here, all of my dirty footage lives in this dirty folder. So I'm gonna rename this folder dash dirty. That's all I have to do to change the file path of where these clips live. Now when Premiere Pro tries to find them, it's not gonna be able to find the dirty clips. So I can do this. I can go in here, right click, link media, we'll locate, but this time point it to the clean footage. Make sure that we display only exact name matches. This is gonna be drum set in dark warehouse. Say okay. Give it a second and everything relinks all at once, automatically. We scrub through, this looks pretty good. Let's double check by rendering everything and watching it back. All right, it looks clean, I think we're in business. Done and done. Coming up next is one of the most important things you can learn heading down the path of a professional editor, and it's a must-have skill for assistant editors. In part 10, we're gonna learn how to prepare a sequence for finishing.